Welcome back guys, I hope you're having a beautiful day today and I hope you're ready for what we're gonna read today. It's gonna be a fun time and let's get straight into it. Enjoy guys. Am I the gay half for telling my vegan friend who doesn't drink that I'm tired of catering to her choices? My 50 female friend Lauren, 46 female, is a vegan who doesn't drink. That's awesome and I have no issue with that. The problem is that she's part of a small group of friends who don't get out very often, but when we do it always has to be limited due to Lauren's choices. We live in an area where our food choices suck to begin with, so having to eat where she can be satisfied is very limited. There really isn't much to do otherwise at night. In addition, she gets upset when any of us eat something that has an obvious meat to it. For example, she doesn't say anything if we get a soup with chicken or something but if we ordered a hamburger she would cause drama then she doesn't drink which is no big deal but she'll send us videos on the harmful effects of alcohol if we get a drink or two with dinner it's gotten on my nerves to say the least it's been a while now so i'm done with everybody catering to her needs i have tried inviting everybody to specific places and invite lauren as well but then she puts into a group chat hey lady since i can't eat at so and so why don't we go to so and so then of course the other ones decide we should go to that one instead i have backed off of going out because i don't want to spend money on food that sucks. Remember, it's vegan, not vegetarian, so it is very limiting, and also it's expensive. Or have my intelligence questioned by sending crap about the effects of alcohol, as if we're not beyond old enough to know or Google it. I barely drink anyway, but I enjoy a glass or two every so often. She asked me why I keep bailing, so I told her, I respect your choices, but by the very nature of them, they've limited mine. Being that I don't have the ability to go out often nor unlimited funds, I'm only going out when I know the entire experience will be what I want. So if I'm in the mood for a steak and a vodka tonic, I want to have them in a relaxed atmosphere and that obviously bugs you if i'm in the mood for a salad and whatever i'll gladly join you or we can just hang out at the beach when we have time during the day she didn't like that too much she said that that isn't what friendship is about and i should enjoy the company enough not to care i told her that i understood and i'd gladly hang out with her when food or drink isn't in question because it's too expensive not to enjoy it she said there's nothing else to do around here then i asked if it was just about friends then maybe she can eat first and then join us out sometimes and other times we can go somewhere that she wants she she then told me that she's not going to sit around watching people eat meat. I said, okay, I get it. And you need to get it that I'm not catering to your needs each time that I'm free to hang out. I later got a text from my mutual friend that Lauren was upset, but she agreed with me because she was tired of the same crap. Of course, this friend doesn't like conflict, so they just listened to Lauren. So am I the a-hole for not wanting to continue to eat food I don't like? Or to refrain from having a drink or two to keep the peace here? Or am I right in feeling like she's being selfish, expecting the rest of us to do what she's comfortable with every time? No, I don't feel like you're the a-hole OP. The the way that she's made it so all of you always have to bend to what she wants to do is completely unfair and also the condescending comments that she makes no i don't feel like you're the a-hole op also the audacity for her to say that it isn't what friendship is about and i should enjoy the company enough not to care how does that not apply to her also you know <laughs> like that's so funny that she didn't even realize that yeah this comment she said that isn't what friendship is about and i should enjoy the company enough not to care then by the exact same logic she should be able to shut her mouth and and let you enjoy your steak and your drink in peace. Friendship isn't about constantly trying to push your values onto your friends or judging their choices. She should enjoy the company enough not to care, not the a-hole. There's a comment that says, sending alcohol is dangerous videos to adults who have wine with their dinner is so wild, not the a-hole. She's immature and relishes criticizing others. Not very good company, eh? Get together with your friends and don't invite her anymore. It's not that hard. Sounds like she doesn't like any of you anyway. And the comment above that too, not the a-hole. Funny how she says it should be about friendship not food, yet she gripes if you eat food that she doesn't approve of or drink alcohol. So it obviously is about food, not friendship to her. Simply don't go out with them if you don't want to go to those particular restaurants. You'd simply be choosing not to go, unlike her who makes everybody change their plans to suit her. Yeah, which is so not fair on everybody else. The comment above that says, if we ordered a hamburger, she would cause drama. She's obnoxious and self-centered. You've behaved extremely kindly to her, more than I would, and this one too. She said that isn't what friendship is about and I should enjoy the company enough to not care. Whoa, she's a giant hypocrite. Not the a-hole. I've gone to all kinds of restaurants that I can't eat at to hang out with my friends. No, I don't feel like you're the a-hole OP. I also don't feel like you're being unreasonable. The next one that we're gonna read is called, I lost interest in a girl because of her hoe phase. I male have this friend. She's nice looking, outgoing and funny. We met in school and we hit it off as friends. We hung out together or as a group. Or me and my girlfriend with her and her boyfriend a few times a week. We've never really been single at the same time so I never really noticed her romantic 
romantically. I mean, I noticed she was attractive, but I never thought of her romantically. I ended up breaking up with my girlfriend a few months later and she broke up with her boyfriend. Well, because most of our friends had paired off at the time, we ended up hanging out like four days a week. I wasn't even aware that I was starting to catch feelings with this girl until somebody pointed out that I stopped dating and approaching other women. It really hit home when she went on a few different dates and I noticed that I was jealous. So I sat her down and I had a chat. I told her I've noticed recently that I was becoming interested in her. I absolutely hated seeing her go on dates with other guys and I wanted to see if us dating would be as cool as our friendship so far. First she smiled, big happy excited eyes. Then something happened, her smile turned unsure. She explained that she had thought of it as well and she is interested in giving it a try. But not until the end of the summer, confused I asked why the end of the summer. She explained that she was in her hoe phase, her words, and she wanted to have a summer of fun before she settled down. The rest of that day was awkward and I cut things short. When she asked I told her we were fine. My pride was bruised a bit and I was feeling disappointed, but not to worry we're definitely still friends. I have to admit the second she chose potentially random hookups and getting ran through for the summer over a relationship, all romantic feelings died. I wasn't mad at her, she did nothing wrong, but the way I viewed her had changed. She was forever in the friend zone for me. I took a few days and I put my big boy pants on and we started hanging out again, but it was different. I only saw her as a friend and I was only interested in seeing her every now and then, not all the time like before. I started dating other girls again, I had no hard feelings and I genuinely enjoyed being around her only like before when we both had spouses. Anyway, one night we were as a group and we all had a few drinks and she says, hey good news, summer's almost over. Oblivious to what she meant till later I say, oh that sucks, I love summer. Then I got distracted by other conversations being had. I did notice she was cold towards me for the night. October rolls around and she wants to do lunch, just her and me. We meet up having a great talk and we talked about our summer. She talks about all the guys she dated over the summer. She used this to steer the conversation to us. She wanted to let me know that she was ready to settle into a relationship and wanted to go back to our earlier conversation. I told her it's cool, I valued our friendship and I think we should stay just friends. She wanted to know what's changed and she wouldn't let it go, so I had to be honest. I told her that her choice to put me on the back burner for hot girl summer was hurtful and I feel like if she actually liked me she would have wanted to be in a relationship with me. She said that she knew that we would be the real thing and she needed to get through her hoe phase to give us an honest shot. I let her know the fact that she felt that we could have been something and she still chose potentially to get run through by a bunch of strangers instead of starting something real tells me that she doesn't feel about me the way that she thinks she does. I accept that and stayed friends with her with no hard feelings but the second she chose to put me on the back burner I lost all romantic feelings for her forever because it feels like she was shopping around all summer and settled on me and I'm nobody's backup plan. She got mad and stopped talking to me. Our friends think I should apologize and give her a chance but those feelings just aren't there. What do you think? Am I the yay hole? I should probably add a timeline. This was last summer. We have seen each other around but she does avoid me if she can. The reason I wrote this now is because a mutual friend and I were talking about last summer, how the fall went and then pointed out that she's still single and asked me recently if I have or would change my mind. I don't think they were asking for her because they said that she still thinks I'm an ass. The top comment says because it feels like she was shopping around all summer and settled on me and I'm nobody's backup plan. Just explain it like this and no one reasonable will have an issue. And the comment under that says I asked her out and she said no until after summer then she said yes but I already moved on. There isn't such a thing as reserving a person for a relationship. Simple as people do whatever they want if you rejected them but said maybe won't reject you later. Yeah that's still a rejection. This isn't a restaurant or a doctor's appointment. The second top comment says you're not the a-hole. You were upfront with your feelings and you gave her a chance to reciprocate. When she chose her hoe face over you it was a clear signal about her priorities. It's understandable that your romantic feelings for her did change and you're not obligated to pursue a relationship just because she's ready. You have the right to choose what's best for you even if it means disappointing others. Yeah I feel like the friends just don't know the full picture. And also how is she really even upset at you OP? Yeah like that comment says you're not obligated to pursue a relationship just because she's ready. And that did say a whole lot about her priorities and I don't think you're the only person who would feel this way OP. I feel like most people if they were in your situation they would be like uh what excuse me and that'd probably stop them from being interested too like this comment says emotional investment isn't a switch that you can flip on demand when she was busy having her exciting summer you were put in emotional limbo just because the season change doesn't mean your feelings have to thaw out too you're entirely justified in moving on to somebody who sees you as a first choice not a convenient option when the party's over yeah i don't really get how she thinks you're an ass op i guess just the fact that it didn't work out the way that she wanted it to yeah and also this comment not the gay hole it would have been a turn off here also if a dude told me that and also this comment there's nothing to apologize for yeah her friends want op to apologize i don't understand that either you don't owe her a relationship you two were never on the same page she preferred to sleep with randos for the summer instead of starting a relationship with you who 
wouldn't be turned off by that? Yeah, good point. She showed you that you weren't that special to her. What would you be apologizing for? I'm sorry I don't want to date you because you prefer to sleep with randoms all summer. Not the a-hole. The next one's called, am I the a-hole for not paying for my girlfriend's girl trip? All right, Reddit. I, 27 male, need some outside perspective. My girlfriend Sarah, 25 female, and I've been together for three years. Recently, I won a bet and I ended up with a decent chunk of spare cash. Naturally, I was pretty stoked about it. Been thinking about putting it towards something fun or maybe even a small getaway for the two of us. But here's the thing, Sarah found out about my winnings and now she wants me to pay for her upcoming girls trip with her friends. No, you're not the a-hole, OP. Now don't get me wrong, I love Sarah and I want her to have fun with her friends, but I'm feeling kind of weird about using my winnings for something that doesn't involve me at all. I suggested that she could save up for her trip or maybe we could split the cost, but she wasn't having any of it. She thinks I'm being selfish and that since we're a couple, my money should be our money, especially since it was extra money from a bet. I see her point, but I also feel like I earned it and I should have a say in how it's spent. Sarah's friends are backing her up. Of course they are. Saying that I'm being a jerk for not wanting to support her. I'm starting to wonder if I am in the wrong here. I do want her to have a good time, but I also don't want to feel like I'm just a bank. So am I the a-hole for not wanting to pay for my girlfriend's girl trip? Oh my god, of course you're not the a-hole, OP. It sounds like the trip was going to happen anyway, whether or not you won money. So she was going to pay for it herself, I'm assuming. But now that you won some money, you should be paying for it? Nah, the entitlement is wild. Pretty much all the comments think that she's going to cheat on OP. Yeah, this comment, not the a-hole. Dude, don't get caught up in their manipulation tactics. The very ridiculous way that your girlfriend decided to pull her friends into your business is a huge put off. Her friends aren't part of your relationship. They do not get to advocate for crap. Why does your girlfriend have the impression that if you say no, all she needs to do is dig in and get her friends to harass you until you say yes? Your girlfriend is extremely immature and self-absorbed and super entitled. Her friends are flying monkeys who can go pound sand. Don't pay for the trip. She's grown. She can finance it herself. You're not married till we get and she's pulling crap like this. No way. I'd be out of there. You might be in a relationship as a couple you might share things, finances being one of them. However, forcing your partner and then trying to bully them, using your friends to do it with you is disgusting. It's a view into your future. Disagree on kids' names? Get friends to bully you. Overspend on shopping? Get friends to bully you. Stop working for no good reason? Get friends to bully you. Want to spend time with your family? Get friends to bully you. Yeah, I feel like it is a giant red flag, OP. Pretty much all of it is. Yeah, this comment too. Not the a-hole. Your girlfriend is now showing her true colours. Stand your ground. Tell her that you had planned on using the money on a fun trip for you and her, but the way that she's behaving now and her audacious entitlement makes you not want to spend anything on her at all. Yeah, what? And you're an a-hole because you won't pay for this? And yeah, to get the friends involved? OP, she's an a-hole, not you. And oh my god, there are so many comments about cheating here. Like this one. Also, a girl's trip is a red flag in itself. I've seen way too many stories about girls cheating in them. And the comment under that says, especially one where she's only treating her boyfriend like an ATM and her friends are egging her on to do it. Yeah, you don't know about stuff like that, of course. But with that aside, there's enough red flags here. No, you're definitely not the a-hole, OP. The next one's on the Entitled People subreddit. Entitled Hellspawn wants my coke and his mother decided that ordering me to hand it over was a great idea. So, I just flew back from Dubai and I had the unfortunate luck of sitting next to an entitled mother and her unruly child. I was cursing myself because I've had terrible experiences with children in my aisles on flights, so I was already not in a great mood. The flight started out pretty smooth, but things quickly took a turn. This kid, who must have been like five or six, was running up and down the aisle, throwing toys and making a mess. The flight attendants were doing their best to manage it, but the mother was just sitting there scrolling on her phone like nothing was happening, or just telling people to ignore him because he's just a kid. About halfway during the flight, I ordered a Coke. As soon as it arrived, the kid zeroed in on it. He started whining and pointing at my drink, making a scene. Before I knew it, the mother was giving me these dirty looks like I was some kind of demon for not sharing my Coke with her prince. <laughs> oh my god. She leaned over and in a tone that dripped with arrogance, said, he really wants your drink. Just give it to him. Wow, the audacity. I was stunned. I mean, it's free, so just ask the attendant to get one for yourself. When I declined and suggested that she ask the flight attendant for another one, she huffed and rolled her eyes, muttering something under her breath. I'm a petty guy, so I took my sweet time in having the drink while loudly playing music on my headphones. Despite her, I ordered another Coke, but this time her kid tried swiping the drink from the attendant's hand. The attendant scolded the mother in a quiet and stern tone to bring her kid under control, after which the mother huffed and puffed like an out of shape marathon runner. For the rest of the flight, she kept on glaring at me like I'd snitched on her to a principal while her kid continued causing issues. It's amazing how some parents think the world revolves around them and their poorly behaved children. Why even have kids when you can't be asked to parent them properly? Yeah, 100% OP. God, that's so frustrating. And the audacity and the bloody entitlement to 
Oh, that's so bad. Like, yeah, the kid is definitely being annoying, but the entitled parent, they're so much more annoying. Like, oh, I wonder why your kid is a nuisance. Probably because you're also super entitled. I'm sorry that you had to deal with that, OP. There's a comment here that says, I had the opposite once. I was flying and in the window seat. In the middle was a boy around 10 and the mum was in the aisle. They start coming around for surface and the mum informs me that I'm only allowed water since her kid would want to pop if I got one and she didn't want one. Wow, the audacity. Oh yeah, that's how it works. Make everybody change for you. The flight attendant gets to our row and the mum says waters. Our entire row will have nothing but water. I say no, I want a Coke. Mum tells the flight attendant the same spill and that I can only have water. I tell the flight attendant I'm 30 years old. I'm not having some entitled stranger order for me. She can tell her kid no. The flight attendant gives me the entire can of Coke instead of just a little thing in plastic cups. Next round I get another can. Yeah, what an awful way to teach your kids. Like, okay my child, I'm gonna make it so you expect every single other person to change because of you and to bend for your needs and to change what they're doing for what you want. That's the epitome of entitled. When that kid grows up, they're gonna be like, oh yes, the entire world revolves around me. So ridiculous. Yeah, this comment too. It makes no sense why she didn't just ask the flight attendant for a coke for her son. To demand that a stranger give up anything for an unruly child is absolutely horrible behavior. Someday, hopefully, she'll come across somebody who won't take her crap. Sorry this happened to you, OP. Yeah, it's actually so bad. And sad too. Like, what do you mean you're this entitled? How? Yeah, once again, I can't believe the stuff that we read. The next one that we're going to read is called Am I the Gay Hoffer Telling My Wife That Her Hobby Isn't a Job And It Isn't Helping Our Financial Situation? My wife, 38 female and I, 40 male, have been married for 10 years and we have three kids, 9, 7 and 4. My wife's a stay-at-home mum and has been ever since our first child was born. I work full-time and I'm blessed to make enough to provide a quality life for our family. We live modestly and I'm very conscious about living above our means. By that, I mean we don't live paycheck to paycheck, but we also don't take yearly family vacations, don't buy designer items and we still use hand-me-downs. My wife has been extra stressed this summer with all three kids at home. When the two older ones are in school, she's fine. But this summer has been hard for her. I've adjusted my work schedule to allow me to spend more time at home to give her time for herself. I take the kids on bike rides, go to parks and swimming and fishing. She used the majority of this time on her hobby, crafting. She has an entire room dedicated solely to her hobby. She will sometimes sell some items that she makes or take on a specific project for a friend or family member or the odd person from the internet. But sometimes I feel like she spends more time and effort on shopping for materials than she does actually crafting stuff. In short, there's no way that her hobbies brought in more money than she spent on it. Last week was an especially busy week at my job and I was unable to flex my schedule to help at home during the workday. My wife complained to me that she needs more help at home and that I need to figure out ways to give her breaks. I told her that I'm doing the best that I can but our job keeps the roof over our heads and if I need to be at the office that's what I've got to do. She said that she has sold some items recently and that her hobby is helping us financially so I should be doing more at home too. She told me it's pretty much become a part-time job for her in addition to taking care of the kids. I asked her to tell me exactly how much money she sold the items for and then looked up her most recent credit card statement to see how much she spent in the same time frame. Even with selling those items, she spent hundreds more on materials. Her excuse was that not all the materials were for the items that she sold, but for other projects as well. I told her that her crafting isn't a job, it's a hobby, and it's not helping us financially. I told her that I'm glad she's selling items and spending time doing something that she likes, but using that as an excuse to claim that I'm not helping her enough is disingenuous at best, especially when I have taken on extra steps to take on more childcare. She told me that I was being a jerk for diminishing her contributions to the family, and I told her that's exactly what she did to me first, but at least I'm getting our family to a net positive financial situation. She's still mad at me and she still thinks I need to do more to help at home. No, I don't feel like you're the a-hole OP and I also don't really know what she expects you to do either. You don't sound like a deadbeat dad or something that doesn't do anything. You sound like somebody who's trying their absolute hardest with the pressure and the responsibility and the weight of having to support an entire family. That's not easy and what are you meant to do? Like just work less? The top comment says not the a-hole. First, in a single income household with a stay-at-home parent, one person having all the responsibility for childcare during the time when the other person is working is not a problem that needs to be fixed. That's literally how it works. Unless you're leaving out the fact that she sometimes comes to your workplace and takes over your job so you can take a nap. If she doesn't want to be a stay-at-home mum anymore, that's valid but it's a completely different conversation. Second, a hobby isn't a business unless you're at minimum keeping track of your revenue versus your cost and trying to make a profit. If she was doing that, again, that's a different conversation but she isn't. The second top comment says not the yay hole ignore that you the yay hole ones it's just people trolling you seem like a great husband and dad not only are you actually working and bringing in money but you're also putting in extra effort to make sure that your wife gets some rest i hope she does the same
plan for you every once in a while. All these people claiming that your wife is trying to start a small business might be right, but that doesn't mean she gets to claim that she has a part-time job and is contributing to the household income when the expenses outweigh the money coming in. Also, it is a hobby. She doesn't get to claim that she's working when all she is doing is enjoying her hobby. Clearly, she doesn't appreciate all the effort you're putting in to try to make her life easier. If she does think it's a part-time job, you should sit down and talk about her getting an actual part-time job once all kids are able to attend school. This way, at least she'll be bringing in money and might even grow to appreciate what you do for the family. The comment under that says, not the gay hole, she's a stay-at-home mum. That's her primary job. If she was selling enough from her craft to support the family, maybe I'd think otherwise. But at this point, it is still just a hobby that's costing the family money. Yeah, I don't feel like you were rude, OP. I don't really feel like you were diminishing what she was doing. Like, yeah, it could absolutely turn into a business. But you didn't say anything rude, OP. You were like, okay, this is what it looks like right now. Right now, it's costing us money. It's not making us money. And I do feel for her too, because it sounds like she's working her ass off at home with the kids. But I hope she recognizes that you're also working your ass off to support the family. Like, if you were doing nothing, OP, and your wife was doing everything, and you weren't trying to make the situation better, like, yeah, that wouldn't be good. But not only are you supporting the whole family, but you are also trying to make things easier for your partner. Yeah, no, I don't feel like you're the a-hole, OP. And I feel like that's enough for today. That was a fun episode, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm already excited for the next episode. I do have something wholesome to show you guys before I go, just to sort of end the episode on a high note. After a long, hard day, I can't wait to go home. Oh, that's so beautiful. And home isn't home like you think it is. Home is being with the person that you love. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that's beautiful. The Sunday kids always make such cute, wholesome posts. I love the stuff that they do. And on that beautiful note, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a wonderful time today. And if you did, make sure you let me know down below in the comment section and also like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And da 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 da, drum roll, please. The comment of the day goes to Victoria Garcia. Hey, Vinci, if you see this, please do more videos with Minecraft cows in them. It's super cool to watch them do their thing while you read Reddit stories. Guess what, Victoria? This episode has Minecraft cows in the background. But yeah, I absolutely agree. I'm going to try and have more Minecraft animals in the background because it is fun to watch them do stuff while you listen to the story. So yeah, absolutely couldn't agree more. And thank you for commenting that. And also thank you for watching the episodes. I'm glad you enjoy them. And thank you all for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye.